Hey, I'm Vinny, this is Makeify. I just made this really bright LED light panel for video work, and I'm gonna show you how I did it. I started with a piece of half inch plywood that I cut down to 12 and a half by 10 and a half inches. Then I got some three quarter inch thick wood and cut it into two squares with one and one quarter inch long sides. I drilled a 1964 inch hole in the center of each square. I got two one quarter inch by 20 T-nuts and hammered one into each square. Then I glued each square to the bottom outside edge of the plywood. As those were drying, I made some knobs on the bandsaw. Alternatively, you could buy knobs at many hardware stores, or simple thumb screws would probably work too. I drilled holes in the knobs. and epoxied a 1 quarter inch by 20 carriage bolt into each one. After the epoxy had cured, I used flat black spray paint to paint the panel and the knobs. I got a piece of aluminum flat bar that was 3 quarter inches wide by 1 8 inch thick and cut it with a hacksaw to 17 inches long. I marked spots 1 half inch from each end of the bar in the center. And drilled 1 quarter inch holes at these two spots. I marked the bar at 2 inches from each end. I put the bar into a vise at these lines and bent each end to 90 degrees. This forms a U-shaped bracket. I marked the center of the bracket and drilled a 21 64 inch hole at this spot. The T-nuts I got have four teeth that bite into wood. I bent those back on one nut with pliers. Then I epoxied it into the hole in the center of the bracket. On the face of the panel, I used these aluminum channels designed for LED strip lights. They have snap-in diffusers, and I've used them before with good results. They come in one meter long sections, and cut very easily with a hacksaw. I cut five channels into a total of 15 pieces. Each piece was 12 inches long. I lightly sanded the back of all 15 pieces of channel to roughen them up a bit. then used construction adhesive to glue the pieces onto the front of the panel. You don't need very much adhesive to get a good bond here. I added some weights and let the adhesive cure. The LEDs I used were ones with the highest CRI color rendering index I could find. Most LED strip lights give off weird color casts but these don't. 
I cut the LEDs into 15 strips that were each just under 12 inches. And I made sure to cut at the specified cut marks. The LED strips have adhesive backing that I removed. And I stuck the strips into the aluminum channels. The channels make it easy to line everything up well. On one side of the panel, I soldered little pieces of wire to connect the negative pads on all of the LED strips. And on the other side, I connected all of the positive pads. I pre-tinned the wires and pads to make this part easier. Then on the LED strip on the top of the panel, I soldered an extra long wire to the negative pad on one side, and an extra long wire to the positive pad on the other side. I used two pieces of electronics to power the lights. The first is a DC to DC converter that will allow me to adjust the brightness of the LEDs. Many LED dimmers will cause flickering on video, even though your eyes can't see the flickering in real life, but this one won't. The other thing I used was a 15 volt, eight amp power adapter. The converter will output a maximum of one volt less than the input, and the LEDs need a maximum of 12 volts, so you need a power supply of at least 13 volts. I very roughly estimated that the LEDs would draw about seven amps, so the power supply needs to be able to output at least that much current. I positioned the power supply on the back of the panel and attached it with a Velcro pad. The converter came with little plastic feet that I removed. I positioned it and marked the holes where the feet once were. I drilled pilot holes at these spots and used little wood screws to attach the converter to the panel. I cut the output cord from the power supply shorter and stripped the two wires. On this power supply, the wire with the white lettering is the positive and the unmarked wire is the negative. I inserted each wire into the correct terminal on the converter and tightened the screws to hold them in place. I connected the long wires from the LEDs to the correct output terminals on the converter in the same way. Then I used some black tape to secure all the wires on the back of the panel. There's probably a better way of doing this, but this is how I have it for now. Then I snapped all the diffusers in place. And removed the protective film from the front of the diffusers. I put the bracket in place on the bottom of the panel. I added a washer to each knob and screwed the knobs into the bracket. Then I spun the light onto a light stand and it was ready for action. I'm really happy with the way this light panel turned out. It's really bright. It's not even on all the way right now. Uh, I like that it's easy to adjust the brightness level. You can turn the lights on and off with this button. Now that just turns the light off. The electronics are still running. The fan is still running. When you turn it off, you have to unplug it to completely turn it off. You can look at your input voltage, 15.3 right now. You can look at your output voltage, 11.9. And then you can dim the lights by changing this output voltage. So if we go down, we dim the lights. Go back up, we brighten the lights. Now these LEDs, you don't want to exceed 12 volts on the output. 
So the fan's pretty loud, but it does do a nice job of keeping everything nice and cool. I measured and the LEDs draw about four and a half amps, which is less than I expected. So I did a little test where I disconnected the fan, which is easy to do, and ran the lights at 12 volts for 30 minutes and measured the temperature and it never got above 53 degrees Celsius, which is well within spec. So it's probably safe to run this without the fan. Because it's loud, when I'm filming something where the audio is important, I'll probably disconnect the fan, but otherwise I'd, I'll probably just keep the fan plugged in uh, to keep everything nice and cool and safe. I'm really happy with the LEDs I use. They have a nice bright daylight color temperature. They also have uh, good color rendering. The aluminum channels with the diffusers are really nice. They give the panel a nice, clean, professional look. They also diffuse the light well. The knobs are convenient for adjusting the tilt. That will come in handy. One thing I don't particularly like is the power supply I used. Uh, it came with a really short cable. I have to use an extension cord, but it's just a standard computer power cord, so it's easy to replace, and I'm gonna replace it with a longer one. I've got links to all the supplies I use down in the description. They're Amazon links. If you follow them and buy anything on Amazon, you help this channel. It doesn't cost you anything. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. You can also subscribe to keep up to date with my newest videos or check out my other channel, Makeify2. Thanks for watching. Hi, I'm Vinny. This is Makeify. I just made this really bright LED video. Oh, wow. Hey, I'm Vinny. This is Makeify. And I just made this really bright LED. What is it? It's a light panel. Light panel. <clears throat> light panel. I measured the LEDs and they draw about four and a half. <sighs> These aluminum channels with diffusers are really nice. They make it. Oh, no. The one thing I don't particularly like is the power supplies I The one, stop shaking. Uh, so it's easy to replace. I'm gonna replace it with a longer one. A uh, new one's in the mail right now. That was too much information. No one cares. We need to eat some lunch before we do this.